Joe, what a finish to that game. And I'm not sure I've ever seen somebody smile so widely after someone's taken out a top stop spin to keep <laughs> the last leg decide. Yeah, it's, it's the best time to do it as well. You know, the last leg at the Worlds, you know, you can't have so much more. It was... Um, I felt like I put myself under a little bit of pressure that I really shouldn't have done, but who cares, you know, the record I've got here, just to, just to get a win, you know, it's really, really good for my confidence. What was the journey that you went on in that game like? Because two sets up, then behind, even in the final set, you're behind and have to come back. Even in the final visit, you must have thought, I've made a mess of this, oh, hang on, I've won the game. It, it was a strange one. I, th I think Johnny caught me off guard, to be honest. Um, Johnny's not one who shows much emotion. I think the most emotion I ever saw him you know, show was at the World Cup with Gezi, but I think he was sort of feeding off Gezi then, but I don't think he was happy the way he was playing the first two sets, being 2-0 down, and he, he, was, he was large in it like, like I'd never seen him before. You know, I, it wasn't, you know, I didn't take any offence to it. I just thought, well, you know, he's, he's bang up for this. You know, he's, he's not going anywhere. And he came back at me, you know, and I just... I just, I don't know... I, I, I didn't panic, but it just, it just caught me off guard and I just thought, well, you know, just get yourself together. He's, he's bang up for it, so, you know, show him that, you, you know, you're up for it as well. And like I say, to come back from 2-0 down the last set, but I fancied it. You know, normally people may, may give up. You know, I might have given up in the past, but I, I, I fancied it. You know, I just thought it's one break, it's my darts. If I can get to 2-1, break him then, you know, then, then see what he's made of. And <laughs> to be fair to him, he's made of, you know, pretty stern stuff. He had the 180 in the decider as well, so... You know, but who cares? I want to not care. Well, look, uncharted territory for you. The last 16 of the William O'Neill World Championship. And fair to say, without playing any best stuff so far. Yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll see how far I can go. I'm, I'm, I'm here for the long haul. You know, I've, I've brought, my, brought my dad with me. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't normally come, you know, normally. But this, this year, he's been coming to a few of them. And I, I seem to be sort of thriving off it. I, especially with, with the, you know, the way the COVID is and the restrictions, you know. You know, a bit of company, you know, it's, it's, it's a lonely place, you know, especially with the restrictions. And, you know, so I'm having me, it's great. And he's, like I say, he's, um, he's <laughs> to be fair, he's my biggest critic as well. So, but I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be full of praise when I go downstairs and see him after this. Uh, will he? I mean, do you reckon you're expecting a few harsher words from your old man as well? Because you probably have to step it up in the next round as well, won't you? Yeah, but that, that's to be expected. If you want to win a world title, you can't expect to be getting through with no substandard 90 averages, you know, if, if, if you're getting through to the last 16, you know, it's, it's great. It if, if, doesn't matter what, you, doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't matter what you average, as long as you get through it. And, you know, I'm, I'm in there, so you can't have so much more than that. I'm actually in there, you know, to challenge whoever, whoever's in front of me next, whether it be Ricky or whether it be Michael. Well, we don't know if it's going to be Ricky or Michael. The bookmakers believe that it's going to be Michael Van Gerwen, but he's a guy you've beaten a couple of times in Euro Tour finals. Yeah, well, the, the smart money's with Michael, but, you know, I prepare for both. Both situations, both scenarios. Um, you know, Ricky's quite capable of beating Michael on his day, but if, if it's his day today, who knows? Whoever it is, you know, I'm in the last 16. You know, who, who cares? You know, I'd rather play Ricky, if I'm honest, as <laughs> would anyone. You know, he'd rather play Ricky than the world number one, but whoever it be, whoever it be, you know, I'm, I fancy my chances to beat them. Beating MVG on the tour is one thing. Beating him in a final of a big stage event like a Euro Tour is another one. Do you think beating him on the William Hill World Championship stage is another level again that you'd have? Yeah, well, hopefully I'll tell, you, I'll tell you Wednesday morning. You know, we'll be having this this chat. You know, after after I've beaten him or Ricky, who, like I say, it's my, Michael. Michael's the man to be. He's, he's the bookies' favourite for a reason, but he's he's there to be beaten. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm confident I can beat him. I'm confident I can beat Ricky. Whoever it be, you know, I fancy my chances. Well played tonight. Thank you. Cheers, Dan. So congratulations, mate. Three-one should have been three-one up. Two-all. Then three-two down. Are you thinking curse of the world has struck again? No, to be honest, I was thinking I should have been three one up, but then because there was a break after the fourth set, I went off. And to be fair, Johnny, I think missed two at double sixteen for a fifty checkout to win a set. So I thought it's evened itself out there. Don't get me wrong, I was I was fuming with myself that I'd missed the sixty eight to go three one up. But I thought, well, you know, two all isn't the worst result in the world. You know, I probably thought he deserved two sets the way he came back. So you know, it was just just a matter of you know reset and go again the best of three sets. Playing Johnny's always going to be difficult because, as you say, you two are really good mates. Is the whole process different to a normal match when you're playing someone close? It's, 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 it's not so much different. It's just it's more it's more the personal side of things. You know, like normally, if it, he was playing, you know, another player, he'd have come inside my table. You know, would have talked nonsense. You know, for the for the three four hours that we was there before, and it was just it, it just wasn't the same because we was playing each other, which I understood. Um, like I say, I was the first in the venue and then Johnny sat at a different table, which is fine.
But then from the other side of the room, he's just, you know, sending me stupid texts, you know, about football and things like that. So it's, it is what it is, you know, you, you, you've got friends in the game. You don't, you don't want to have, you know, live the darts life sort of in a lonely, lonely space. You've got friends in the game, but there comes a point where you have to play your friends. And luckily I was, you know, came out the best side this time. What was Christmas like as well, knowing that you were coming back and what was the drive back Boxing Day like? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I, I was more thankful I didn't have to come back Christmas Day, you know. Um, you know I had a couple of, couple, of, couple of drinks, you know, as you do at Christmas. But, you know, if I'd have come back Christmas Day, it would have been totally different. I had, I think I had an hour's practice at Christmas Day, you know. The wife weren't happy, you know, my family weren't happy, but I'm like, well, you know, I want to be world champion. So, you know, the, the sacrifice is like that. But, you know, it was, it was nice to go back, you know, I felt for... I felt for the foreign guys, you know, who were stuck over here. I think um, when I pulled up at the hotel Boxing Day, first person I saw was Michael, and he, he just looked, he look, you know, he looked so, not down, but just really deflated, you know, because obviously he's got a young family, he wants to go home, things like that. And um, like I say, I was one of the lucky ones being from the UK that I could go home. So I think the fans should appreciate, you know, what the foreign boys do, you know, just to put on some entertainment. Touched on that, what you said there. If it was to be Michael, do you think that could be to your advantage, the fact they've had to spend Christmas over here? I can't see how playing the world number one as opposed to the world 30, <laughs> number 32 as, as an advantage. Just the fact his attitude, like his old demeanour and the fact that... Yeah but, yeah, but, yeah, but then that, that's a dangerous way to look at it because he's thinking, well, you know, I'm going to make it worth it that I've stayed over here. You know, he wants to tear everyone's head off, and rightly so. But, like I say, it is, it is what it is. You know, Ricky's, Ricky's in the, you know, the last 32 by right, as is Michael. You know, so whoever wins, you know, it should be a good game, whenever it be, 29th, I think, maybe. Joe, pleasure as well as Thank Thanks you, cheers, Phil. Joe, there are plenty of pivotal, <coughs> pivotal moments in, in that match, but you look at that first set and he went to 2-1, I think he hit a 103 finish to, to take that first set. Looking back, that was probably quite a pivotal moment, wasn't it? Not really, no, because I think Johnny was miles behind. I think I, the 103, I, if, even if I'd have missed the double 16, he was, he was still miles behind, I think. I think I thought what was going to be the pivotal moment when I took a 110 out for something, yeah. I think to go 2 and up, and that was when Johnny really kicked into life because I, I sort of gave it some then, and then Johnny, you know, wasn't having it, and you know, he came back great at me, but you know, I'm glad, I'm you know, really proud of myself the way I'm myself together to get over the line. You say Johnny came right back out after after the second set. Do you see anything in the break from Johnny, or, or did you? Yeah, I sat next to him. We were talking, you know, mm -hmm. as 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 we would would do, you know, down down the local pub. It was just. Yeah. I say there's no malice in the game, but it was after we were talking after the first set, you know, just you know, normal nice. It is on the second set. After it went two apiece, there was, there was no talking. Then you know, I think we both knew it was you know business and you know get on with it. And great to see such respect from, from both of you at the end. I mean, you, you could see he was though he was gutted not to win the game. He was pleased, pleased for yourself. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it wasn't pleased for me. But no, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's difficult because obviously we you know under these restrictions and. You're thinking, you know, he, he stuck his hand out. I'm not going to stick a fist out, you know, to shake his hand. You know, you shake his hand, and he's, you know, he's, you know, he's a cracking guy. You know, he's really, really one of the good guys on tour. You know, we get on great. So it was just unfortunate that we had to play each other tonight. But you know, fortunate for me, I come over the other side. Okay. Cheers, Jack. Nice one. Cheers.